Good morning, everyone. Uh, we welcome you to this morning session, which will be opened by Josef Petrakis from the University of Munich, speaking on on Marius System CST to be revisited. Thank you very much, Jörg. And many thanks to Jörg and for giving me the opportunity to give a talk here. So it's to be revisited because this is very much a work in progress and very recent work. So I look forward to your comments and suggestions. Uh, the problem is very old, is to find a formal system that uh, suits well to Bishop's construction of mathematics. Uh, there are many possible answers, there are many uh, suggested answers. So one uh, is of my own system CSD, uh, constructions of theory. And uh, I will discuss a bit this system and uh, try to explain why it's not so faithful to the practice of Bishop, although it has many good ideas and can be uh, used in a modified way, probably to have another answer to this problem, maybe more close to what Bishop did. And in order to find a formal system for Bishop sets and function theory, we need to explain what this theory is all about. So I will try to reconstruct this theory uh, uh, today. And uh, by doing this, I will explain why my system is not uh, so faithful to it, but uh, quite close. And to the end, I will say a few words on how to modify a bit CSD to get a formal theory of sets and functions. So, uh, Michael is considered as one of the first logicians to appreciate Bishop's uh, book, and he was one of the first people to formalize it. And uh, Bishop says we're indebted to Michael for noticing that exponentiation suffices to do constructive math. We never need power set. We will discuss this along this talk. Now, if you, the starting, <coughs> the starting uh, sentence of, or uh, sentences of Mindy's paper is, I will do to Bishop what I did to Brouwer, formalize this, uh, this his system, but I will try to be faithful to the practice of, of Bishop, as, uh, because people like Hiding, Kreisel, Kim, and Wesley were not so faithful to Brouwer's practice. So, the practice is very important as a motivating uh, uh, for formalizing a uh, system. You see how things work. And you try to give a formal account of that. Uh, now, from constructivists, by constructivists, uh, the Michael system is considered as a, a good uh, system. British and Reeves say that uh, it captures well the spirit of Bishop's approach. And uh, we thank Michael for pointing out that the power set action is used in the chapter of measure theory, but uh, we can avoid it. I will explain that uh, the power set axiom is not used in measure theory in Bishop's book, although the power set as a concept is used, and these are two different things. So, some slogans. In ZF, everything is a set. In CST, everything is a set or a function or a number. And in Bishop's sets and function theory, things are a bit more refined, as we will see, at least in my understanding of it. So let's uh, take a look at CST. Uh, I know most of you know this system. We start with the predicate logic, first order predicate logic with equality, and we have some constants, zero success of natural numbers, and some predicates. Something is a set, is a function, A is an element of it set B, and the function A is defined on B, it has value C. So it permits in this way partial functions, and partial functions are very crucial to this system, as we will see. There are then Michael groups, the axioms in, uh, in, uh, in A, B, C, and E groups. So the first axioms are quite general. So for example, either A is a natural or a set or a, fun, or a function, and then, let's see, this one, it says that if the function A is defined on B and has a value C and D, then C is equal to D. And this equality is the given equality of the system. And you can talk about, because of the uniqueness, which is expressed through equality, you can talk about the value of the function. <coughs> then we have the usual piano axioms of the natural numbers and Michael's axiom of non-choice. It says if you have a set and for all x in A there is a unique element y, a unique object y, such that something good happens, then a function is generated. 
Uh, this is a very important action uh, uh, because um, it has, it's very vital in order to define functions in the system. I will say something more. B, sorry. Yes. B is anything. It's just a parameter. Yes, parameter. And we have the actions about domain, range, exponentiation, union of two sets, the set of two elements, separation with for restrictive formulas, and this action of union. The exponentiality for functions and sets, and the two choice axioms of Bishop, count of choice, and dependent choice. And if you want to avoid equality, as a starting part of the framework, you can add some equality actions in the end. OK, about the, uh, the action of non-choice, this is a, a function generation action. So if you want to have a system that talks about functions, you have to wait to introduce functions. And this is the way you do it. If you want to talk about the identity function, you need to have the appropriate formula that will generate it, or the composition. And Michael gives uh, a proof of the fact that if you have a set and two elements that are not equal, you can find a function from the set of two elements to the natural numbers, such that a goes to 0 and b goes to 1. So he uses the appropriate formula for that, and the c axiom, and you can easily generalize it to a function from the whole set a to n if a has decided equality. Things that you can prove also in type theory. There's a question here, if there are applications of axiom c, in constructive mathematics that involve non-restricted formulas. So do we need the full? Um, <coughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. Can you see XMC again? Yes. So you have a set. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I have it also here mm -hmm. in this form. For every X in A, there's a unique Y in B, then you have the function. So it's not a choice, but it's a way to talk about uh, functions. In, in the book of bishops, the book bishop says, okay, I have an x and uh, I have a y and I just, just I associate uh, y to x. And he formalizes this idea, uh, this word to bishop in this action, with this action. I mean, it's a manual replacement. It's a reference. Yeah. yeah. Now, Michael takes natural numbers as primitive sets, but also functions as primitive objects, and this is very important. So his theory is a theory of sets and functions. And uh, functions can be partial, he does not use the partial axiom, and he includes extensionality from functions, the choice principles that we know in Bishop's style of mathematics. So, so far this is very close to Bishop, and, uh, but his, his equality is global, and this is a very a deviation from the paradigm of Bishop, where equality is specific to each set. And uh, uh, this is followed in type theory, but not in my set. And uh, as we will see, Bishop has more than one notion of set, Michael only one, and as I explained, Bishop has more than one concept of functions, or function-like objects, while Bishop has only one. And uh, I don't know if this object of Bishop I mean, the families of subsets and the families of sets that I will talk about can be incorporated into Michael's system in an easy way. I know that there is a translation of these concepts into a type theory. There is this slide of, at least this is what I know of, of Eric Palmgren from 2005, uh, type summer school in Göteborg, where he explains how one can see, view these objects in the left type theory in the families of sets in categorical setting. And also, in another paper of Paltrian, there is a connection given between Bishop's theory and the <coughs> year's elementary theory of the sets. Uh, but I would like to describe to you the, info, the, formal the, the informal theory of sets and functions of Bishop because it is, uh, a, I think, a remarkable system uh, in which you can talk about tag theoretic and categorical concepts without using the heavy machinery of these uh, systems. So, I think that Bishop uses the power set, but not as a set. The problem is that he defines an equality in a membership condition about it, and that, then this, is, this gives the impression that he defines a set, but he never uses this as a set. And uh, he defines families of subsets indexed by some set, but these are not functions. So, so we have objects function-like objects of a form uh, 
uh, you have a set I, and you have the power set, and you have uh, a routine, a finite routine, as he says, as he says, that associates to each element of the index set a, set, a, a subset of X. And, uh, but he never calls this a function, and this indicates that the power set is not a set, actually. It's something else. And for this concept, he uses the term finite routine. And I will show, I will try to explain that although the concept power set, in the sense of families indexed by some set, is used and it's necessary in, 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 in measure theory, you can't do without it, at least in Bishop's style, this does not mean that this object is a set. So, the set-like objects of this can be uh, reconstructed as follows. This is my reading, I may be wrong. And I add a few things in order to make an uh, expression that Bishop uses in a natural language in a mathematical way. So, we have primitive sets. Bishop uses only one, the natural numbers. We have more, but we don't need this point, maybe. And we have defined totalities. These are objects that are, are, are determined by a membership condition. And uh, we have, we need two universes in order to describe uh, things that Bishop says in the natural language. So the first universe is the universe of sets, and the second universe is a universe of triplets, A, B, and F, where A and B are sets, and F is a function from A to B. And uh, with these two, uh, and, uh, and these universes are are very, very uh, um, weak concepts, set-like objects. So it, they, just, they just have this membership condition, and no equality is used. There's no need to use, to, 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 at least for the needs of the Bishop book, there's no need to uh, uh, define equality here or here. And uh, they are not sets. The universe is not type, as it is in type theory, because this membership condition is not good. It does not, doesn't have a constructive character constructive content. So we have presets. <coughs> presets are the defined totalities where this membership condition is good. And we have defined totalities with equality, like the power set or the partial functions from A to B, where A and B are sets, which have which are uh, <coughs> the membership condition and equality, but not necessarily with a good membership condition. And then we have defined sets where the membership condition is OK, and sets which are either defined or primitive. This is the pattern. So a primitive set is a set-like object with a given equality and membership uh, condition that satisfies axiomatically the axioms, the conditions of an equivalence relation. The only primitive set is n. And then we have the defined sets, the defined totality given by a membership condition, the defined preset, or a preset simpler, which is just this thing here, but somehow the um, membership condition expresses a construction that can be carried out in a finite time, at least in principle. And uh, we have a defined totality with equality, an inequality condition that satisfies, that you have to prove that satisfies the actions or the conditions of an equivalent relation, and a defined set that is just a preset with equality. So good membership and equality. And the set is either primitive or defined. And the function-like objects are, uh, all of them are assignment routines. The routine is a finite algorithm, another word for the, for, for, the, for the concept of algorithm. And you have assignment routines from one totality to another, operations, functions, and families. Families of elements of a totality with equality. So P of X is a defined totality with equality, not a set. And you have families uh, of, that, of objects here indexed by some set. So more uh, uh, formally, a bit more formally. So an assignment routine respects membership conditions between defined totalities. If you have A and B set, an assignment routine is called an operation. And if you have a set A, it plays the role of, of I here, and the totality with equality uh, and the membership 
members in inequality, a family of elements of being indexed by alpha is an extensional assignment routine. So if A, if I is equal to J, lambda of I is going to be equal to lambda of J with the equality here of the defined of this totality. Function is uh, the usual extension operation, and an embedding is just the usual one one function. Now, the functions from A to B, it's natural to consider as a set. Uh, the, the membership condition is just this, and the equality is the extensionality, and it expresses a construction. You know, at least in principle, what it means to have the function. It's by itself, it's, a, it's your finite routine. But if you go to the power set, the definition is as follows. Uh, an element of, the, of a subset of A is another set, and I mean embedding from B to A. And the equality is the pair of inverses. So this totality has a membership and an equality, but it cannot be seen as a set because the membership condition is not good. There is no way to say, you don't have um, uh, a, a notion of construction of a set. And uh, it's somehow you need to search in the collection of sets in order to find a set. So you don't, this condition is not, is not uh, something that expresses um, an algorithm, but it is, it is a useful membership condition. It can be accepted as such, but not as a constructive membership condition. And in this sense, the power set is a defined totality with equality, but not a set. At least you cannot accept it as a set, but you can use it. So, as I said, he never used it as a set. Bishop never uses the power set as a set. Uh, it is considered as a set in the book of Bridges and Richman and in the book of Mines, Richman, Richman book, the constructive algebra. They are more free to talk about it as a set. But if you see uh, the definition of that will follow the family of subsets, as I said here, he, he never Bishop never says this is a function from I to P of X. He's very careful to use the word finite T or assignment routine as we use here. No. Now, the family of subsets. You start with i, you take uh, the assignment from i to the, to the p of x, and you want the equality to be preserved. i equals j, then lambda of i is equal to lambda j. The two subsets have inverses. And now follows a very important concept. It's called the set of subsets. A set of subsets of a set A indexed by I is the family is above, but you also have the converse implication. The inverse implication. If lambda I is lambda J, then I equals J. And the use of the term set uh, it will be explained soon. But this is a very crucial concept. And the choice of the term is not accidental. So there are many families of subsets in constructive mathematics. For example, in constructive topology, the neighborhood space is a pair, a set, and a family of subsets on a set, indexed by some index set, such that something happens. With, it satisfies the, the, the subsets satisfy the basis uh, of a topology condition. And if you search the book of Bishop, families of subsets are everywhere. Uh, the Lebesgue decomposition of measures, the random nicotine theorem, all of these are expressed for families of subsets. If you open the uh, Richman Mines written book, book uh, families of ideals and families of submodules are always there. And integration theory, you need families, uh, you need uh, sequences of integral sets, so families indexed by natural numbers. And of course, the definition of measure space. So, about this definition, Michael says in the paper, oh, there is a problem here, it's surely a slip from the, from the side of Bishop, he uses the power set. And uh, he also claims that there is no hint of this action in Bishop's book. Yes, he's right on that. I think the power set, as I said, is not there, but the power set as a concept is there and actually everywhere. So this is the definition of measure space. A measure space, and this is from the Bishop Briggs' book, and this is important, it, it's the definition after the Bishop chain measure theory of 72, not the one with the Morel sets of 67. It's a triplet, it's a triple X and a new, where X is an inhabited set and M is a set of complemented sets in X. And new is a mapping from M into R having these properties. So if you read it, uh, at first, if you read it, you think that this M is a set of subsets and new is a function. Therefore, of course, we use the power set action somehow. But uh, uh, Bishop wants to be read by mathematicians 
and he doesn't give all the details in order not to make things look very technical. And uh, Michael says this is the real difficulty in the paper about uh, the bishop uh, book. He uses M, a set of subsets, and the function, but you cannot do that. And this Lebesgue measure, for example, cannot be defined. There is a problem there. But there is no problem. The set of measurable sets is a set of subsets in the family sense. And uh, you have from an index set I, it's not given a definition because, uh, uh, but he uses the, set, the term set of subsets. And one more thing here, in the definition, the one clause says there is an element in the set of subsets that it's with positive measure. And Bishop Wright writes there is an A in M. He doesn't use the, the, the set theory notation of the membership. So the set of subsets is a family with, the, uh, with this condition satisfied. I equals J if and only F of I is F, mu M of I is equal to I on J. And if and only if. And now, when you want to define a function on M, the measure, you define it on the index set. So a function phi from a set of sets to a set B is just a function Fi on the index set to B. And then you define phi of mu I to be phi of i on the index. And then you can see that the condition, the inverse implication, is crucial to prove the extensionality of this object, that the preservation of equalities. If mu of i is equal to mu of j, by the inverse implication, this means m of i is equal to m of j, then i is equal to j in the index set i. Therefore, this is a function, f i of i is f i of j, and this is just the definition of phi. So the, the, the concept set of subsets is there because actually you can treat it as an object in which you can define functions. But of course you have to think all the time that you define the functions on the index set, not on the, set, on the object itself. So no power set axiom, just families of subsets. And it's not a slip. He uses this definition all the time from, 90, from 72 and it's throughout the book. And more examples are here. Take the set of the touch of the subset of the set X. So you take this is a family indexed by the functions from X to 2. <coughs> and you send F to all the elements that start F of X is 1. And this is a set of subsets. Delta of F is delta of G if and only if F is equal to G. And now you can define a function from the family delta to the family delta through a function on the index sets. And the function complement of the, of the deductible set that Bishop defines in the chapter 3 of the book is just the uh, function that's based on the function on the index set, send f to 1 minus f, and then take the deltas. Let's go to partial functions from the set A to set B. These are triplets. You, have, uh, you want to define partiality, and partiality is crucial in the definition of integration space, which is the static definition in the measure theory of, of of uh, Bishop Bridges' book. So you have uh, a subset of A, that means a set, and then embedding of from X to A, and then you have a function from X to B. Uh, um, and the totality with equality of all partial functions from A to B is defined, you take these triplets, and you say F is equal to G if the domain uh, the do two domains of the partial functions are equal as subsets, and the functions generated are equal as pointwise on the domain, the usual thing. But you cannot accept it as a set because the membership condition depends on fixing or on, on something which says take any subset, <coughs> any set X, and then depending from X to A. So it's not a, a constructive membership condition, but it's a defined totality with equality. Now, why the two universes? If you start doing measure theory and uh, study integration spaces, and uh, even in the, in the chapter 3, Bishop defines the supremum of a sequence of partial functions from A and to B. So, uh, so if, if you take this, uh, uh, this is an expression in the natural languages. So in order to define the sequence of partial functions from, uh, uh, sorry, this is A to B, not a n. Um, uh, you need to define a sequence of sets 
and the embeddings to A. And then you need to define functions from this, the, the sets AN to B. Okay? And in order to do that, you need these two universes to, to, to express this. So, first you need a family that's by n that takes you to the, the zero, this is the universe of the sets, and then you need two, a pair of, of, of families. The first uh, index by n, the first takes a set and a, and they bed it from the given set to a, this is the family of subsets, and you need one more family over n, which sets um, uh, which takes this a n and a function from a n to be appropriate. So this concept can be codified with the use of these two universes. The product is, is a clear set, it has a clear membership condition, and a, co a set is called discrete if its diagonal is detachable. This means that uh, equality is determined by a function from x to p. From, X, from A to A to 2. Now, about the definition of Richman of a family of sets. In the Bishop Bridges book, Exercise 2, page 78, uh, there is a definition of a family of sets given by Richman, which is motivated by category theory, and it says a family of sets indexed by some set I is a family from I to the universe 0, such that if I is equal to J, there is a function lambda i j from lambda i to lambda j such that in the case of i equals i it's the identity and it satisfies the optical composition rule. And I will you can see that as a functor from the set i to, uh, to the category of sets or you can see it as, an as a transporting type theory. But this can be formalized easily, formulated easily in, in, uh, in, in Bishop's informal theory of sets and functions. Because for example you can take i to be discrete set as it is suggested in the exercise two of the first book, or the first book of 67. So you can say the following, you can avoid dependent functions because you can say that uh, a family of sets is a, is a pair of two families. One is defined on the index set i to the, to the universe zero, and the, the other is defined on the, on the diagonal of i, which is a, it's a good set, a discrete set, to, uh, to the triplets. And lambda 1 of ij is just the, the set and the function between uh, the, set R, uh, the set lambda oi and lambda oj and the function between them. And the second family is just the, the one that tells you that um, uh, determines the properties of the original definition. So you can reconstruct it with the use of, of these two universes avoiding the dependency. The Gaussian sets also obey the same uh, condition, uh, the same uh, are into this framework, you can do them, you can work with them. If you understand that you define a family, and everything works uh, uh, smoothly, I think. And now if you want to, to take this informal theory of sets and functions of Bishop, if you have this as a guide that you need uh, uh, these objects, uh, then you can start the transforming a bit Michael's system, adding a few more predicates. You add two more constants, add a few more predicates. You have more function objects, more valuation pre 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 predicates that depend on the function uh, objects that you're, you're, that you're studying. You have axioms of the kind of group A, group B for the natural numbers. Maybe you have the desirability of the property. And you have to find appropriate C axioms for all these function like objects. And then you have to define probably inductively the membership formulas and the good membership formulas to um, determine the defined sets. So these are very starting ideas, and I think that uh, yeah, they require a lot of, of work. But the formal theory of sets of functions is a good, I think, uh, guideline to find working bottom up the right formulation, the right set theoretical formulation of Bishop's uh, informal theory of sets of functions. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we hardly time for any questions, or maybe just one. Yes, what about logic of your intuition? Yes, of course. And how the strength of your theory? Sorry? What is the proof that the strength of your theory? Well, uh, first of all, I have to write it down. 
properly. <laughs> but this is a question that a logician should ask. Yes, I <laughs> okay, thank you again. But